Proverbs 24, 32. If you're there, say amen. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth and thy want as an armed man. Numbers 32 and 23. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord. And be sure, your sin will find you out. Amen. I want to title the remarks this evening, The Danger of Doing Nothing. The Danger of doing nothing. Father, I thank you for your goodness, your people in this place. I thank you that we get to be gathered together in such wonderful times, filled with expectation. But Lord, we don't want to advance into the next chapter. Why don't we lift our voice and not just listen to me pray? Amen. Come on. We've watched the choir. We watched everybody else pray. Are you going to just watch me preach because I'll lay the mic down? We ain't going to do that. Come on. Lift your voice. We have church. We're in here. It's Sunday night. We warmed up this morning. The visitors are gone. It's time to have church. Lift your voice. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, we don't want to leave this house the same way. Come on. We want to leave changed. We want to leave inundated with power. We want to leave. Father, convict me if I need conviction. Change me where I need to be changed. Don't let your word leave me the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the wonderful name of Jesus. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you promise to stand up and shout hallelujah and say amen, when I say something true, you may be seated. If not, you have to stand the whole time like I do. It ain't fair otherwise. God is good. All right, stop right there. Everybody else sit down. Okay, if you didn't stand on that point, everybody else stand up. Y'all got to stand the rest of the service. Y'all must not believe God is good. God is great. I'll give, you, I'll give you a second chance. Come on, you don't need new stuff to say amen. You need true stuff to say amen. God is able. God can deliver you from cancer and nicotine and drugs. He can put marriages back together. He's a way maker. There's one God. His name is Jesus. There's only one truth. Come on, somebody. Now we're going. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now you may be seated. Isn't church a whole lot better when we do it together? Church a whole lot better. It, look, I didn't even say anything fancy. Y'all just decided to finally get involved. This is a team sport. I'll say it again. This is a team sport. We... Well, what's the sport? Killing devils. Delivering people. Getting people healed. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. It's a war. And war is a whole lot easier when you got the whole team warring. We are, we're in the battle. We're in the fight. We're in a fight. Be sure. Your mama said it to you all the time. Be sure your sin. <laughs> It's going to find you out. And, what, and it's true, rightly. So, be not deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever. Man soweth, that shall he reap. You're going to reap what you sow. Uh, you can only hide sin so long until it, it contaminates the container, until that container starts permeating everything around it. You, you can put, a, you can put a, a glass, a pitcher of water in your fridge and put it in there with a little clove of garlic, right? They don't have to be in it. That garlic can just be next to it. Next thing you pour that water, you're like, ooh, that water tastes like garlic. I didn't put garlic in it. Nope, you just got garlic hanging out with it. You can't have skim on somebody. Who you hang out with is going to affect you. That's why Jesus didn't even touch the water. They brought the water, put it in the pot. He didn't touch it. He didn't speak over it. All of a sudden, it became wine because it just became what it was around. You become what you're around. You, you can't escape the consequences of sin. You've preached it to your kids. You've heard it preached your whole life. Be sure your sin will find you out. And there's all kinds of sin. And, and, and we include that in this text. And in the context of it, lying and cheating and stealing and murder. And, and, and I don't agree, disagree, I should say, with the context of that. That you lying, it's going to be found out. You cheating, you're going to find out. Murder, they're going to catch you eventually. If not here, it's going to be busted up there. You're going to get busted. 
However, I think sometimes we generalize texts so much we miss out on the true meaning of them, the specific meaning which dulls the blade of truth that this text possesses. Moses is speaking, but he isn't speaking in general terms. He's actually being very specific about this matter. As a matter of fact, he's, he's not even talking about sin that we do. He's talking about things we don't do. He's addressing, in, this, in the context of the scripture, it's addressing what they would not do. Let's read it again so you can get it, 32 and 23. But if you, 32 and 23, I, there it is, but read it with me. But if ye, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. He said, if you don't do it, you sinned against the Lord. And be sure, what you don't do will find you out. He said, the danger is doing nothing. There is a sin, and that is the sin I want to talk to you about tonight. One that we've perhaps failed to preach or speak much on. It's the sin underrated in the Bible. Because we, you know, we want to preach about all the, all the real high top, you know, the child molesters. Boy, if I can get on that one, y'all be running the aisles. Oh, yeah, man, let's hang them in the town square. Sexual immorality. Oh, yeah, man, let's get on that. Murder, yep, that's right up there. Stealing, lying. But, but one we often forget is a sin called doing nothing. I'll say it again, the sin of doing nothing. I don't know about you, but I can still re remember my mother. Now, if my mother called my name and she included my middle name, I got some laughs. If it went something like Matthew Lewis Tuttle, <laughs> whoo, man, I went ahead and put on an extra pair of blue jeans. You know what I'm talking about? It's like I would say, I didn't do it. Matthew Lewis Tuttle, I didn't do it. It was Anna. <laughs> I didn't do it. Many times she'd say, yeah, and that's the problem. You didn't do it. So you, now you're in trouble. And I think there's some of us that wonder why God keeps jerking the chain or why we're under constant conviction in our lives. And, and we're thinking, you know, I don't know why. I don't know why I feel this. I don't know why I haven't, I haven't done anything. I don't know why I can't seem to get healed. I haven't done anything. I don't know why I can't find my purpose. I haven't done anything. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's why you're not healed and you haven't found your purpose. And maybe it's all linked to the fact that you haven't done anything. Because there's a sin called doing nothing. You don't get to go to heaven as Switzerland. I said you don't get to go to heaven as Switzerland. There's no neutral. Come on, you're either going to be in it or you're going to be against us. And that's the setting of the text. They're preparing to cross over into the promised land. And Numbers 32 and 1 and 32 says, Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and Eleazar the priest and unto the princes of the congregation saying uh, Athrod and Dibon and Jazar and Nimrah and Heshbon and Aleha and Shamba and Nebo and Beon. Even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is the land for cattle and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore said they if we have found grace in thy sight let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession and bring Bring us not over to Jordan. The tribes of Reuben and Gad have got together and they got to thinking to themselves, you know what? We've got good ground right here. The Jordan's here. I know promises over there, but this is good land. We've already got the land cleared. We've already driven out the inhabitants. Uh, why, don't we just, why don't we just stay here? I mean, the Amorites' towns were vacant, and, and we can just move in, and we can avoid all the fighting and all the conflict. Uh, I mean, the other tribe, I'm not saying the other ten tribes can't cross. Y'all go on. Y'all have a good fight. Man, we'll be with you. You're in our thoughts and prayers. And it's a great idea. Man, it actually sounds like a good idea to me. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about joining one of their tribes. 
I mean, and, and they bring it to election. It passes with flying colors. The polls say it's favorable. I mean, the, the Reuben and Gad, they've got this incredible thing. And so the leaders of these two, these two tribes, they go to Moses, the princes of the tribes of Israel, to present the petition on behalf of the people. Now, these, this is an incredible thing, for they have a bipartisan uh, plan. They've got two tribes that have actually for once come to an agreement. It's a miracle, a wonderful proposal. So they figure out, you know what? We can do this. We don't, it's some bloodshed we can prevent. It's some war we can bypass. Uh, we, can, we, we don't have to work and we can just settle and be comfortable. That's what they're saying. They're saying, you know what? God, God is going to be with you and I'm sure he'll fight for you. Uh, but we've decided that we're not going to go and we're not going to cross Jordan. God bless you. Godspeed. We'll follow you on Facebook. We'll keep up, man, we'll, we'll send you a little bit of money and help you out a little bit. But, but here's, what, here's what Moses said. He says unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war and you sit here? He said, hold on just a second. Are you saying, <laughs> you saying you're going to just stay here and do nothing while your brothers go and fight for their inheritance? You, 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 you are a selfish people. You think because you've got this little piece of the pie and you're good to go, you can sit here and enjoy it now while your brethren fight for their lives. But don't you realize the impact, he says, that this could have on the ten tribes of Israel, the lack of involvement. It could discourage them that they might lose heart, that it could influence them to not cross over. He says, thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For they went up unto the valley of Eschol and saw the land. They discouraged their hearts of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. He said that your, your fathers did the same thing. There were some people and they started talking about staying and it discouraged everybody and nobody got to go. Come on. He said, he said, listen, there's a sin if we don't go. There's a sin in doing nothing. And I've just come to remind somebody on a Sunday night, perhaps you're a little weary. I'm a little weary. Perhaps you're a little, oh, do we have to fight? Yes, we, but I've already got the victory. I know, but there's more victory to be had and we cannot stay silent and we sure can't sit still. They missed promise, not because they were worshiping a golden calf. They missed promise, not because they murmured and they complained. They missed, come on, not because they rebelled against Moses. The sin of doing nothing. The sin of, my monitor's down ahead. The sin of doing nothing. Come on, it'll rob you. It'll rob you of the promised land. I don't want to miss the promise because I didn't do something. If I die, let me die on the try. Let me die doing all I can to make it. And that's what Moses does. I'm not going to preach long. Moses looks into their eyes, into the princes of Reuben and Gad, and, and he says, you're acting just like your daddy's act. He said, I, 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 I remember this. It's like it's being repeated. He, he, I, hear the, I hear the passion of the preacher Moses. He said, didn't you learn anything from the past? Come on, how did it end last time you didn't get involved? How did it end last time? Haven't you watched and seen what the others did that refused to get connected, that refused to get involved? He said it didn't end well. Behold, you've risen up in your father's stead and increased of sinful men to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. For if you turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness and ye shall destroy all this people. He put that on those, those two tribes. He said, hey, if you guys don't get involved and if we don't go together, we don't get to go at all. Come on, I've come to tell somebody we're in the middle of a building campaign and let me say, you might can say, well, we're comfortable, we've got our piece of the pie, but if we don't go together, we can't go at all. Come on, I said, if we don't go together, we can't go at all. And so we're gonna go together. Come on, Moses said you can be comfortable and claim your little piece of the pie. Come on, but that does not excuse you from the battle. I know you've already got your portion of the promised land picked out, but that doesn't excuse you from the fight. And just because you're comfortable does not excuse us from doing nothing. I said comfort is not an excuse to do nothing. Come on, I love it. I like Moses when he's about to die. That's, he's on his deathbed, basically. He got nothing to lose. I can't wait till I get that old. You know, I'm pretty close. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to die tomorrow. I just say it anyway. I don't have much time to wait. But, man, it's going to be great. <laughs> like, 
I don't want to die but I'm going to tell you you sure don't want to hear the sermons after they tell me I'm about to it's going to come out it's going to be great that's where Moses is at he's not holding any punches he's saying you know what you're, you, you, bunch of, you bunch of lazy cowards that's what he's saying He's like, it would be a sin for you to stay behind. It would be a sin for you not to be involved. It would be a sin for you to be idle and not participate. It would be a sin for you not to help your brethren as they're trying to battle and face the adversity. It would be a sin for you not to help the rest of Israel capture their God-given promises. That's what he's saying. He's just straight up. This ain't me. This is Moses. I'm nice. I... I uh... Like I told you before, y'all know I, I sometimes I used to in particular go in and I, I'd buy, I like to buy foreclosed homes. I hate it for the people, but it kind of turns out good for me normally. They, they don't pay their bills. Hey, that's your problem. You don't pay your bills. The bank comes and gets it, okay? Well, it takes forever typically for that process to happen, and then it has to go through another process until it finally comes on the market. And typically a foreclosed home that hits the, actually hits the MLS has been on the market, has been vacant for a year or two, two and a half years. And, and I've been in a bunch of these houses. Anybody ever been in a house, been empty for about two years? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah, y'all you know it, 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 It's not like real pleasant. Am I right? I'm not even talking about they had dogs. I'm just talking about they just did nothing. The toilets ain't been flushed in two years. You know what I'm talking about? And, and, and all of a sudden, it's like the, the air is stagnant. The doors, they, they open heavily. And... It, it, I, and I'm learned, I've learned, Brother Seth, that no activity is a liability to maintenance. Inactivity is a liability. The, 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 the best thing, I had a mechanic one time, I, was, I didn't have a lot of money, and I was looking to buy a car, and there was a car with a hundred and some odd thousand miles on it, but it was pretty new, uh, relatively new. It was like four or five years old, but they'd had over a hundred thousand, and I said, man... I don't know if I want to buy that car. It's got a lot of miles. He said, really, a lot high miles on that interstate? He said, that's probably not that bad, son. He says, that, thing, that, that means that thing's been running. Come on. And I bought older cars with low miles, and everything breaks on them. Do you have any mechanics who know what I'm talking about? You, you get a 1986 that's got 3,000 original miles. That thing's not good. The tires are dry rotted. All the hoses are dry rotted. All the belts are going to break on you. It's all going to be clogged up and messed up because the thing's not been run. My dad would take, he had, we had a diesel minivan, and uh, we'd get out on the, the, the Autobahn, and he'd get that thing going full speed. Rah! My mom would be like, slow down. He's like, no, I got to burn it, get it hot. It's good for the engine to run it hot. I think he just wanted to go fast. You know what I mean? He's just trying to go fast, I'm using that as an excuse. But he learned, he knew, he taught me. And you know what? We, we put hundreds and thousands of kilometers on those, those cars and never had a, a big problem because we just kept them moving, kept them moving. You know what I've learned? Stagnant water stinks. Stagnant water has diseases in it, but when the water's moving... I don't want to leave it in. You know what they do to those, those foreclosed homes? I'll come in and the door's kicked in and criminals have been in there and they've stolen, they've stolen the copper wire and they've, they've, they've punched the holes in the wall and graffitied the house up and the house was in pretty good shape if someone would have just stayed in it uh, but because it was left vacant uh, they came in and robbed it of the, even the bones that it had. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, come on, when, you, when you're in a place and you don't understand what to do, don't you sit down and quit and do nothing. You're opening the door. Come Come on for a criminal to come in and rob what you do have. Go ahead and just get up and I know it hurts, but move anyway. I know it hurts, but run anyway. And if you can't run, walk. And if you can't walk, shake. And if you can't shake, wiggle. But move, move, move. Do, do, do. You got to go. You, you got to go. You got to go. Come on. One of the worst things you can do is just do nothing. It's destructive to your body. We got Dr. Jamie over here. And let me tell you something. One of the great things she's going to tell you to do when you go to the doctor, they're going to say, you need to exercise. Matter of fact, even if you've got arthritis, you're going to need to exercise. The more exercise you can try to do, actually the pain level goes down. Did you realize that? That if you will move, come on, you got rheumatism or, or, or other kinds of diseases. Uh, uh, a matter of fact, one of the diseases plaguing America is that we all sit around all the time. You realize that? That when you're sitting down, 
is upping your chances of heart disease by, I don't know, a whole lot. Uh, your, your diabetes, it all goes up just because you're sitting down. Am I right, Dr. Kimmel? Just wave at me. She, she's nodding her head. I'm preaching, I'm preaching doctor truth right now. She's like, he's not a doctor. I got a doctor. And the doctor said, I'm right. The doctor said, you need to exercise. It'll lo- your life, you will live longer if you exercise. You'll live healthier as you ex- Let me tell you something. The same thing applies to your spirit. If you're just a pew pimple, you're going to die young. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to die of bed sores. I might die young, but it'll be with a sword in my hand. I'm not going to die because I sat still. I know it's going to tick some people off and make them mad, but who cares? I got to go. I got to move. I got to run. I got to advance. I got to conquer. I've got to move forward. Come on, I've got to move forward. That's what people of faith do. They move forward. You, you, I'm tired. You know what will make you more tired? Not exercising. Come on, well, I'm not hungry because you ain't moved. Come on, somebody. I've just lost my appetite for the word because sitting down don't make you hungry. But you get up and you start to work and you start to run and you start to do what God has called you to do. And I'm telling you what, all of a sudden you'll say, man, the word has never tasted so good. Come on, I said, worship has never felt so good. What happened? You just got up and said, I'm not going to sit anymore. Why sit we here until we die? Let's go. If we're going to die, let's just die doing something. I'd rather die with my leg falling off on the street, but I'm going to go. I would have gone. Well, I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm just waiting on the Lord. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness. This is the definition of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall, they shall what? They shall what? They shall, with wings, they shall, does that say run? They shall run. They shall walk and not faint. Come on, somebody. Wait on the Lord isn't sitting around doing nothing. Wait there literally means to serve. Come on, and and the service is that they shall run and not grow weary. Come on, I, 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 I forget what I preach where. But here's something I've been using at every conference I've been preaching for all the weary people. Like, I'm so weary, I'm so weary. i tell you why you're weary. You know, it's crazy. We're like, we live in the most exhausted world ever. We don't have, we don't, we, don't, we ride in electric cars. We get it. Our backsides are heated and cooled. I mean, we got apps for our cars to turn. It's unbelievable. We got computers that think for us. We got AI programs that write their kids' papers nowadays. I mean, it's like the chillest life ever. But you're talking to 15-year-olds. How you doing? Oh, I'm just so tired. I'm on my 13th Red Bull. Recently, a teenager died. They got one of these loaded drinks, four of them or something, over at the Panera somewhere. What? That's true. He died. And anyway, I'm like, my goodness. I, 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 I was drinking a few of those Celsius, but I've laid off because I think it was causing inflammation in my body. I, didn't, I really didn't need it. I just kind of started liking the flavor. I got plenty of energy. I really do. I wake up. I, I really do. I'm like, whoo. And I got four kids, a donkey. I got a pony. They can't seem to stay in the pasture. I got to go out and get them. I got four chickens. Man, you'd never know. Chickens could put out, four chickens could put out enough eggs to feed the entire world. I, son, I'm going to tell you what. I told my wife, we are not going to die. We got four chickens. We, we're just going to eat chicken, these eggs, for the rest of our lives. And we got a barn and rental properties. I pastor a bunch of people that are just awesome, but they like to text me all the time, and I love that. That's wonderful. I'm doing this business over here deal. I'm doing that business. I'm flying somewhere to London this week. I'm busy. I'm busy. I wake up with more to do than I, and, and I'm fine. I'm doing, matter of fact, I can't wait to get up in the morning. I struggle going to sleep thinking about all the things I'm going to do the next day. I'm not tired. And so I said, maybe your weariness isn't because you're doing too much. Maybe the Bible says that they shall run. They shall run and... See, the devil says if you're weary, sit down, quit, give up, turn in your resignation and say, I'm doing too much. I think I need to take a little time off. But the Bible says if you're weary, get up. 
When's the last time you ran the aisle? Come on, if you're weary, here's how you get over weariness. You get out in that aisle. See, when you see these people run aisles, you know what they're doing? They're saying, I need my strength to be renewed. Come on, and if you're about to faint or if you're about to fall over, if you're at the place where you're like, I don't know what else I'm gonna do, don't give up. Get up, they shall walk and not faint. You walk and you don't faint. You run and that's how you get strength. Hell is hoping you sit down. Hell's hoping you give up. Hell's hoping they've wore you down to the place where you can't shout and dance. Come on, but I'm gonna run so that I can be renewed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what's going to happen if you do nothing? It's going to be a rev- this, I, this Sunday night. This is when I bring my deep revelation. Scuba gear on. Y'all ready? Deep one coming. You know what happens when you do nothing? Nothing. Woo, look at your neighbor and say, we got a deep preacher. We got a pastor that studies, and he, that's revelation. I said, you know what happens if you do nothing? Nothing. Come on. And the longer nothing happens, negative happens. Some of y'all get worried because I'm always pushing and going and, 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 and that ticks a lot of people off. Y'all, oh, what are we going to Who cares? It's part of it. They're never, let me tell you what dogs don't bark at. Cars sitting still. Come on. You got, cross, you got these railroad crossings out and these trains coming down there. And little dogs are going, row, 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 row. you know what I've never seen? I've never seen the conductor be like, Ooh, hold on just a second. We don't want, he seems like he's a little mad. I think we'll stop the train because the dogs are barking at us. No. Oh, you, you know what? Your, your $4,000 little poodle mix, whatever, could be standing on that tracks. That conductor be like, you about to be a poodle sandwich and just keep on trucking. The train does it. It just blows that horn maybe an extra time. You know what you need to do to every little yapping puppy, every little lap, yapping devil? Is you ought to just say, and keep on moving. Keep doing what's right. Keep having church. Keep dancing. Keep speaking in tongues. Keep baptizing people in Jesus' name. Don't you worry about a little yapping Yorkie. You're on a train and it's bound for glory. You Come on, you're on the winning side. You're on the winning side. Don't let the hater slow you down. You're going to win. Blessed is the man that walketh. Look at your neighbor say, I got to walk, but I'm not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm standing in the way of sinners nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in his season. His leaf. Do you want to be this kind of tree? Uh, It will not wither. And whatsoever he Whatsoever he shall prosper. I'm just waiting on God to prosper. You got to get out and start doing. Your, your, your favor needs a job. Let me say that again. Your favor needs to get a job. Come on, your favor needs to get a praise. Come on, your. I'm favored, but I still got to go to work. I'm favored, but I still got to put in offers. I'm favored, but I still got to, come on, I still got to execute it. And whatever I do, come on, I just believe it. Come on, when I put in an offer on a deal, I don't expect to get denied. You got to change, I'm off my notes. You got to change your language. Oh, I'm not, you know, probably isn't going to happen. You're right. It probably isn't. Everything I do never works out. Nope. Nope. Because you went in thinking it wasn't going to work out. But what if you had a whatever I'm going to do? And so that means if, it, if I'm doing and I tried it and it didn't work out, you know why it didn't work out? Because it wasn't going to prosper. That's why you didn't get that job. That's why you didn't get that contract. That's why you didn't get that property. That's why that didn't happen. God said it's not going to prosper. And here you are moaning and complaining about what, come on, didn't happen. And he says, just do the next thing because the next thing's going to prosper. 
I know that person backslid, but don't stop reaching. The next one's not going to backslide. They're going to live for God. Don't stop teaching Bible studies. They're going to oh, they're going to get baptized. Keep on whatever you do. He only blesses what I do. I got to get to doing. I got to get to going. I got to get to being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You better watch out for the bitterness uh, that happens to faithful, steadfast, but overlooked. You know what I mean? There, there, there's some that just, they, they expect to be acknowledged simply because they're present. And that, that'll, get, that'll get you in a bad place. Come on, because other people start getting recognized. They're God's blessing, and you'll start feeling underappreciated. And it's hard. Come on, sometimes that's hard for others. You get bitter about, about the degrees of God's timing and the way he promotes people. And you end up like the elder brother in Luke 15. You know what I'm talking about? Why is he getting blessed? Well, you know, and the people start getting cynical. And, 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 and I've learned something. Cynical people don't get cynical overnight. They don't get bitter overnight. It's just a little bit here, a little bit there, a little time, time, time. Let me tell you who doesn't get bitter. Busy people. People fighting and working. Come on. on I, 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 the ball boy on the basketball team is cheering. He, he's like, ah, he's just involved in the win. And if you're involved in the win, come on. You can't get, you, you're not going to get better because you're too busy making advancements and winning and, and, and pushing back darkness and killing demons. And come on. I, I tell you one thing I don't like is sitting down with people that all they talk about is people. It's on my notes. I don't like to talk to people that all they do is talk about people. I like to be with people that like to talk about things they're doing. You know what I mean? Like, tell me, whenever, when I hang out with a preacher, I'm like, what are y'all doing to have revival? And I'm, I'm comparing it against what we're doing. I am. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's not as good. That's, that's awful. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah, failure, failure. That's a disaster. Ooh, there's a good one. I'll take that one back to Eastgate, and I'm going to throw that in. I'm going to start doing that. And so, come on. And then, and then I talk to other preachers. All they do is ever talk about what they're doing. And then I'm like, well, all right. How many did you baptize? Well, we've baptized 14 in the last 12 years. I'm like, well, you probably should be asking me what I'm doing. <laughs> Come on. I like to find out when I'm with people. I like to, so how do you, if they're healthy looking and they fit. and Like, Johnny, you know, the first thing uh, J.D. Dix and I ask him is, what do you eat? <laughs> He's 99 years old. Chicken. Am I right? J am I right, J.D.? Chicken, right? What we've been eating a lot of, baby, we've been eating a lot of chicken. We, I'm telling you, I'm like, man, it's been working mighty good. He's made it to 100. I want to make it to 200. So if he's eating one chicken, I'm eating two chickens. You know what I mean? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bypass that sucker. I'm gonna, I know tall guys don't live as long, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to be the first tall guy to make it to 150. Y'all are like, oh, God, no. Please let him die soon. We, you know, the next guy's going to be nice. Come on. I've just learned that when you're going and doing and being with people that are doing and going, it, it's exciting. It's alive. It's the worst thing you could do, come on, is let mold start growing in this building. Come on. You think, we, you're like, well, what are we going? The, 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 hey, if, let me tell you, if we get bored around here, we'll just change the wall color just so we can do something. We, we are not going to sit still and idly fold our hands and say, well, okay, sarah, sarah. No, 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 no. I am going, I'm not going to get to the attitude where I've sat there so long where all of a sudden I start saying, well, where's my calf? Because that's what they do. Where's my calf? You know what? I, I've, been, I've been with you all this time. They start measuring it on how long they've been there and what they did. Or what they did not get. Come on. I've been here my whole life and I've never been recognized. And I paid my tithes. And I da da da. da. I don't want to get to the place where words like that ever come out of my mouth. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. God, I don't ever want to get to that place where it ever... If my voice goes out and I can't preach anymore, I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to be the best aisle runner you've ever seen. I'll be dancing. I'll be shouting. If my, come on. If my feet are broke. I, I might have told you this story about old Tom, Tom Trimble. What's the guy in Memphis? The, land, the guy. Do we have an accident? All right, guys. We, we all run this way. Don't forget that. Oh, you all right? 
That's what I like. That's what you call a church injury right there, you know. And won't that be a testimony at the doctor's office? How'd you hurt your knee? Well, I tell you what, I was playing washers. How did you hurt your knee? Well, I was running the aisles. I was running the aisles. What is that? What is running of the aisles? Oh, you ought to come and see. It's the greatest thing. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you're a parent, you should probably run. If your children are under 12, you need to run with them, all right? Amen. We need to have that under control. Look at your neighbor and say, he's doing a good job. What's the, uh, uh, quite a muscle there, man. Um, remember your dad told me that story about that guy in the wheelchair. What was his name? You remember? Yes. Yes. Walter Nazarock, and he was in a wheelchair. Yes. Okay. Okay. How many of you ever heard the song? I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. Mm-mm. No, y'all haven't ever heard that, and y'all are Pentecostal. You, you got to turn in your Pentecostal card. You, if you literally have never heard, I'm just warming up. Till I reach the other side. Come on, Magruder's made it famous. Who many of you know the Magruder's still? Come on now. All right, good. We got some of you. I'm just warming up till I reach the other Okay, that song was written by, go ahead and stand. That was written by Ryan's dad. Isn't that awesome? We have a famous songwriter's son and a famous songwriter right here. I'm just, he wrote it about a guy. What was the guy's name? Walter Nazarok. And he was lame. He was in a wheelchair. Is that right? He was an aisle runner and a hooper and a holler. And they used to make fun of him. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So this guy was an owl runner and a pew jumper and a Holy Ghost shouter. And as he got older, uh, infirmity got him and he couldn't walk. He couldn't, and he was, he was bound to a wheelchair. And so they would bring him to the, the church and, and he, couldn't, he couldn't move. And so they gave him a little pin light, one of those little laser lights. You know what I'm talking about? And they put it in his hand. And when the Holy Ghost would start moving, all he could do is just have his pin light screaming across the, <laughs> across the, the, the ceiling and you'd see that light and go up around the back and it would be jumping all over he said if I can't run I'm going to leave and, and Tom Trimble he told him he said you know what I'm just warming up Pastor Tom Trimble Tom Trimble went home and wrote a song about a man that said my legs may not work my hands not work but give me a laser something's going to move and you got to get a mindset that says it's something's going to move I'm going to do something I'm going to move so- I'm done complaining about where I'm at what's gone wrong and what's failed put me in Put me in the game. I'm ready to go. Woo! I'll tell you words that are dangerous. Your season's coming. I'm going to tell you, it has a way of lulling us into a relaxed posture of passivity. You know what I mean? This is going to be your year, and then it's not. You know what I'm talking about? This is going to be my year. And then your dog dies, your cat dies. Amen. Maybe your horse dies. Save you a bunch of money. I promise you that. That ain't your year. Another year goes by. You're like, this is going to be my year. And you're just sitting there waiting for your season. I'm just waiting for my season. Come on. Your season's waiting on you to get up and do something. I can't stand board meetings. I hate them. I will not be in a meeting that goes longer than 30 minutes. Ask staff. That staff meeting, cap it at 30. Because in 30 minutes, we can talk about everything we need to do for one week. Come on. Sitting around and talking and planning is a false sense of accomplishment. At some point, you got to get up from that meeting. And I'm sitting there saying, all right, all right, okay, go, go, go. Now go do it. Now go do it. And here's the thing. You've sat around and planned and planned and planned and planned. And now the hour has come. We've talked about it for generations. We're going to have the biggest church. We're going to have revival. We're going to take our city. We're going to be the head and not the tail. All right, you told Matthew Tuttle that too many times. I'm 42 with the mic. We're going to do it now. Now we're going to do it. Let's take it. Let's go. Let's be everything God promised us we could be. Hallelujah. 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 And I know. And I got a little notes, but whatever. I'm not going to preach Wednesday night. I know it's not comfortable sometimes to push outside of our comfort zone. But comfort will kill us. Come on. We got to have growth. We got to have growth. And so I've got to do it. Look at your neighbor and say, I got to do. 
got to do. So what are you going to do in the house to create an atmosphere that sets others free? Come on. What do you do? What do you? What do you do? What do you do? I'm not going to be talking about how you critiqued constructively what we did. We don't need, I'm sorry, let me tell you what we, we have an abundance of, fully supplied. We are, we're just fully supplied of the constructive critics telling us how we should do it better. We got that, that role's filled. So, okay, you're fired from that one. We don't need you there. You're not needed in the constructive criticism department. We have a whole department for that they get paid. Come on. The question is not how are you going to critique what's going on? How are you going to contribute? Well, you know what? I just think if we did this. You know how many times a week I hear that if we did this? And I'm thinking, my God, if you just got up and did something. I want to look at him and say, you know what would happen if you did this? If you got up off your pew, clapped your hands, and shouted just a little bit, it would change the whole thing. It Oh, if you'd get up in Monday night prayer and start praying out loud and calling down fire from heaven, it would change the whole. Come on, somebody. We don't need colored lights and fog machines and disco balls. We don't need pyrotechnicians. No, 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 no. What we need is a group of people. Come on, that'll say, put me in. Put me in. Let my voice be the one that echoes. This is a church. This is a church. This is a church. And I'm engaged in battle. And I want you to know that my involvement or, or lack of involvement, amen, is what helps people get the victory. I should say my involvement gets the victory. My uninvolvement can bring defeat. Look at your neighbor say, we, we ain't playing. Church. Church, we got a clock. I'm just going to ignore it so that you can get over that. The church is not an entertainment center. This isn't a, well, good Lord, I hope they sing my favorite song tonight. No. This is not an entertainment center. It's turned into that in Christianity. It's Sunday night. Y'all don't like it. That's all right. It's still right. Church is not for entertainment. Church isn't come in, darken the whole sanctuary. You know what I don't like? They turn off all the lights. And it's all dark out there. And I, I'm not trying to throw stones, but maybe I am. Hit a devil. I'm like, why y'all turning all the lights off? Well, you know, that way it's more private worship experience for the people. I said it, it, the worship experience ain't for the people. Worship experience is for God. And if you turn all the lights off, I mean, hold on. Did y'all just see the wreck we had? We literally had a head-on collision with the aisle running right here in front of my own eyes. That happened with the lights on. How on earth are you going to run the aisles in the dark? How are you going to dance? I'm not talking... I'm talking sweat, bobby pins flying, barefooted. Come on, I'm talking. How are you going to do that in the dark? I'll tell you how. You don't. That's why they turn them off. Oh, I'm way off my notes, but boy, it's nice being off my notes. That's why they turn them off. It's because they, they don't have to dance because it's dark. And I, I told one preacher, I said, I said, why lights off? He said, oh, man, you know, blah, 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 bunch of blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying you're going to hell for it. I just didn't like it. I, then the lights came on. And I saw girls in miniskirts. I said, boy, you got a bunch of new converts. I said, how's that? How's about that? Oh, no, she's been here her whole life. I said, man, there's makeup all over that. I said, now I see why you got the lights off. Because if you don't see it, you don't have to confront it. I need the lights on. I need to see if you're struggling with something so that I can be the what. Here's the thing. You know what my job is? It's called watchman on wall. 
How can the watchman watch if there is no light? Turn the lights on and let, come on, and hold yourself accountable to a pastor and a church that looks at you and says, hold on, you haven't been dancing like you used to dance. You haven't been worshiping like you used to worship. You haven't been praying like you used to pray. And I saw you and someone loved you enough with the lights on to come over and say, hey, baby, that's not how we do that. This is how we do it. This is how we praise God. This is how, oh, hey, girl, get up on in this thing and get to shouting and get to dancing. Get to hold on. That's why you got to have a, realize it. Because it's not entertainment. I said it's not entertainment. It's This is a wrestling arena where we grapple for the souls of men. This is a hospital where we heal the wounded. Come on, and how can I see if you're wounded if it's dark? This is the barracks, come on, where we encourage the soldier. This is the sanctuary where we shelter the fearful. This is the temple where we call down the glory and the candlestick is on in the holy place. Come on, preacher. Preach to me now. Preach to me now. Let it be seen in this light. So keep the lights on. I need a pastor that can see me. Come on. That's what this is. This is, this is not, look at your neighbor say, this isn't just for fun and games. This is a hospital where the sick come. This is barracks where the, the soldiers are encouraged. So the question is, what, what are you going to do to ensure the success of the service? Ooh, it got quiet there. What are you going to do to help the visitor find freedom? What are you doing to help a brother get victory? Because there's a sin in doing nothing what you gonna do when the prayer request is on the screen but you don't know who they are what we gonna do when the prayer line is activated but it's someone else's family that's sick what we gonna do on Monday nights Monday night is not fellowship night it's not sit in your pew and look and mumble it's prayer meeting night And the devil can, let me say, so say, well, God can read my heart and read my mind. Exactly. But the devil can't. I'm going to say that again. The devil can't read your mind. You got to, you got to, how did the devil, he's forceful. He is. You, the, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered the violent, and the violent take it by force. You've got to stop asking permission and praying, like petitioning the devil. Oh, dear devil, would you please leave my family alone? Come on, man. He's never going to leave your family alone. The only way you're going to get control is if you take control. He didn't ask for permission to come in and get you addicted to drugs. He didn't ask for your permission to split your family in half. He didn't ask you to come on. He didn't ask you for permission when you were being raped and molested. He didn't ask for permission. Why do you and why do we feel like we have to sit around and wait on him and ask permission? You got to get up and raise your voice and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you and I take authority over the air. I you got to get to praying and realize it's a, it's a fervent and, and it's a violent thing that prayer is. What are you going to do in prayer meeting? What are you going to do when we're knocking streets? Come on. What are you going to do? What am I going to do when my brother's going through a trial? What are you doing when your sister's in a need because there's a sin and doing nothing? What are you going to do at altar call? What are you going to do? Do you realize what altar call is? Y'all are always like, oh, I don't know why you're always beating us up to come to the altar call. Get up here. Come up here, Stevie. Come up here. You be the devil. Actually, you're not a real good devil. You better do it. Come here on this side. You be the saint. Uh, little Caleb. I mean, little uh, Chandler. Come on here. Okay. You be devil. Okay, you're in the altar. Uh, go down the altar to actually further the point. This is just real good on the fly. All right. You come over here. You're the devil. You come over here, you're God. The altar is a tug of war. Pull. He's trying to pull him one way. Hell's trying to pull him. Anybody ever come to church feel like you're being ripped in half? Looks to me like the devil's winning. There is a solution. 
I'll buy you a new one. Keep pulling on it. There's a solution. There's a solution. Oh, somebody got a picture of the solution. Guess what? It's not you standing like this. When the souls of eternal man are being weighed in the balance as heaven tugs against hell for the souls of humanity, let me never be seen. I just didn't really feel it. You know, I, I, eh, I'm, I'm not going to the altar. Like altar, we think altar call is the reward, our reward to the preacher for preaching a good sermon. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he did a good job. I'll go up there and just clap my hands so he doesn't feel bad. Yeah. Baby, I'm not going to feel bad. The only people that make me feel bad try to make me feel bad is the devil. Yeah. I'm going to get home tonight, and Michelle's going to say, this is what you did wrong, and I'll try to fix it. <laughs> and then I'm going to say, God, did I do all right? And he says, yes, and I'm going to go to sleep, and I don't really care. Woo. Come on, somebody. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what matters. So when there's altar call, I'm tugging on the Lord's side. What you going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do when someone else's child is praying for the Holy Ghost? What, what are we going to do when someone else's family meters, members needing victory? Because there's a sin in doing nothing. What, what, what am I going to do when I know the kid lives next to me, doesn't go to Sunday school? And all it would take is a ride to get him there. What am I going to do when I see there's a need that needs to be done, but nobody's doing it? What am I going to do when there's an ask for volunteers? What am I going to do to make the building project work? What am I going to do? Let's not forget to commit to say, you know what, I'm not going to sit still. Amen. And the man, as I conclude, was blind, sitting by. And there's Jesus. He comes by. You remember that story? I've preached about it. And he spits on him. <laughs> Sometimes God's solutions feel dirty. The Bible says he spit on him. And he made mud. He made mud out of it. Put it on the blind man's eyes. The next thing he said was this. Nine and seven of John. I don't know if you got it up there. But here's what he said to that blind man. You be the blind man, boo. Be blind. Come on up here and be blind for a minute. All right. Stand right about there. Face that way a little bit. All right, you blind. Close your eyes. You can't see Jack Diddley squat. All right. <clears throat> it's going to be get a little gross. Are you telling me I'm going to have to dance and shout? Come on. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to get a little bit like weird sometimes. But when you're blind, you don't care. And you have to get to the place where it doesn't matter. Come on. Can you imagine a 2020 snowflake, 2024 snowflake if they got spit on? Oh, my goodness. That hurt my feelings when he started talking about the lights and stuff. Oh, come on. They'd never be able to get healed because they can't get over their feelings. And your feelings rob you of victory. You got to get over that. You got to get over that. We, we've got to get over this. It's so ridiculous. He spit on him. He's blind. And then he says, go. Go wash. All right. Go. Go ahead. Boo, go. No, you're going to have to move your feet. No, no, you got to keep your eyes keep your eyes closed. Come on back up here. Let's finish the point. Go. Which way? Well, where? He's blind. He's blind. He's not healed. He's blind, covered in mud, trying to go. What are you saying? I'm saying he probably tripped over a few things. Probably looked kind of funny going through town like this. I got to find the pool of shell. Have you seen the pool? Get me to the. And as he was going, as he was going, the Bible says he was healed. Let me tell you something. Some of you are blind and some of you are saying, I don't know. Here's how you get healed. You get up and you say, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to sit here anymore. And as you go, all of a sudden, your eyes start opening and you're like, oh, I can see like I've never seen. There's a 
blessing in going, but there's a sin in doing nothing. So get up, Eastgate. Get up, Mom and Dad. Get up and do something about your marriage that's stagnant. Do something about your kids that are falling apart. Do something about the mess in our world. Let's do something. The danger is not in doing. The danger is in doing nothing. So arise in war. God is for you. Hallelujah. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Grab somebody by the hand and say, I'm about to go. I'm about to go. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm away late. Whoo. Man, our Sunday nights when I was a boy would go to one o'clock in the morning. Grab somebody by hand. You know what we're going to do? We're going we're gonna to do something. Well, what am I going to do, preacher? I don't know. Get creative. Come up with your own do. But don't stand still. We're just going to, on the count of three, I'm going to start shouting and probably doing the traditional tuttle, tuttle twirl. You can do whatever you want to do. But whatever you do, just let it not be nothing. Let it, and I just think maybe you ought to get creative. You have creative powers. Come on, you, you use creative powers to date that woman, and you got her. You had to use some innovative thought processes. Why don't you in your mind think, how can, how can I bless the Lord? What, what am I, am I going to spin? Am I going to leap? Am I gonna, I'm going to give you a second just to contemplate what you're about to do to create an atmosphere of breakthrough. Come on, in a minute, and at the count of three, we're going to create an atmosphere of breakthrough. It's going to be explosive. Come on, and as we begin to create it, the Holy Ghost is going to fall in this house. And come on, there's going to be chains that fall. Heal, healing is going to going to take place as we begin to magnify the Lord, as we begin to give God praise. Come on, one, two, three, shout, do something, hallelujah. like I've never given. I'm going to shout like I've never shouted. I'm going to praise like I've never praised. I'm going to be a soul winner. I've never taught a Bible study. But there's more dangerous and danger in not than there is a danger in do. I'm going to be criticized and hated. But let it be because I was marching forward. I'm going to do what God called me to do. I'm going to be what God called me to be. I'm going to war for righteousness. I'm going to war for holiness. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy, if you're a daddy and your boy's in the house, get your boy or your boys. I want you to come.